very nice natural thing to include in church about those numbers. We often represent um, decimals or percents of decimal form. The first thing that I want to talk about is what we mean language-wise when we say the word percent. Um, the word percent means per hundred. And the easiest way to kind of think about that is that a language, what do we call a penny? It is one cent, right? It is one cent, it is one hundredth of a dollar. So one hundredth would be one penny is one cent. This is per cent. So um, it means per hundred. And um, if you take this sort of expression, if you have something that says n percent, it means n hundredths. That's what it means. The word percent means. Um, there are two ways to convert, at least two, there's two to convert. Um, of giving a number into a percent. So here's one of them. One way is to take 7.9, given. It's a number. And to write it over 100. That's what it means. And, I'm um, sorry, 790 over 100, uh, which would be 790%. So um, another way that you've probably seen or thought about it before, um, and it's related to this first one, has the idea of moving the decimal point. You guys remember that? So how many places do you move the decimal point when you turn into a number into a percent? Two decimals, which direction? To the right, and why do you do that? what you're really doing is multiplying by 100, right? Hence, cent, percent. So you're multiplying by 100. Um, another way, um, and you may or may not like this, but you both present this one as well, is to think about it as a proportion. So 7.9 out of 1 is the n out of 100. Of course, it works out the same way. If you cross multiply and simplify, you still end up moving a decimal and whatnot. It, it is all the same thing. Just different ways of thinking about it, okay? So here's... Um, the first one we're going to do, and we're going to do just that. We're going to take a number, in this case 42.6, and we're going to turn it into a percent. So um, I want to show you just how the proportional works, since that's called an east common when you've seen it before. Um, because if you end up in a classroom that has that method that it's promoting, um, you're going to be encouraged by whoever chose that curriculum that you support your textbook, right? So you need to see this too, all right? So one way to do this is to set this up as 42.6 over 1, and it equals to n over 100. So you actually write it that way. And then, of course, cross multiplication, which we've talked about before. So one of the cross multiplications results in 1n. The other one, what is 42.6 times 100? 4,260. And we're actually turning this into a percent. So this is n equals 42.60%. Which is, of course, what we would get if we took the decimal point to move it to the right, isn't it? Sure. So it, it, of course, gives you the same thing. Um, we'll do the same thing with um, part B. Now, part B, we could write this as 8 over 3 over 1. Right? Oops. Um, but is it 8 over 3 over 1 just 8 over 3? Yeah, it is. So I'm just going to write it as 8 over 3, okay? So 8 over 3 equals n over 100. So when I cross multiply here, it's a little bit less straightforward than it was before. And that's happening, of course, because this was a fraction to start with, not a decimal. But um, if we multiply across now, I have 3n one diagonal, what do I have the other diagonal? 800. And then of course I divide by 3. And if you were to take the calculator, if you were to write out at this point 800 divided by 3, you would turn it into a decimal expansion, right? So let's do it. So 3 goes into 8 how many times? 2. So this would be 6 then. So 20, right? 3 is into 20 how many times? 6. 6 times 3 is 18. And unfortunately, I've already turned into the same remainder I just did before, right? 20 
and it's going to keep happening, and it's going to keep happening, keep happening, which means what happens after all of this? They're all sixes, right? Now, the decimal doesn't occur until after the 800, so it'll be after this one right here. So if I have my decimal repeating, it actually doesn't repeat anymore. It has to occur in the decimal side, right back in the decimal point. So this is where we would have this. So my um, value for my percent down here would be 266.6 repeating percent. Um, let me also mention that we want the decimal bar, the repeating bar, to be over as few digits as possible. Like, is it correct to say 6, 6 repeating? Yeah, it means the same thing, but it's not necessary, right? 6 is what keeps repeating, not 66, truly, right? The most condensed way to write it, come on, fraction one. It's just write it over the one digit since the 6 is the only thing to write. All right. Um, but we also want to be able to take a percent and turn it back into a decimal form. And, um, there are, again, multiple ways to do that. So one way that you're very familiar with is moving the decimal two to the other direction, right? So move it to the left. Like, to the left, in my directions, right? I've never seen any more directions, so that was just hard to get that. So we move the decimal two to the left. Um, another way to do that, and I'm going to show you this one because it's less familiar to me again, is to write the value over 100. Again, percent per 100, right? So what we could do is, first of all, I don't want this to be written as 4 1 half. So how can I write that in a better form? Yeah, 4.5. So let's start there. Okay. So I can write this as 4.5 divided by 100. And that's literally what you're doing when you're doing what you're about to do next. So we're just kind of showing the step before it. Because anytime you divide by a power of 100, that's when you're moving the decimal point to. So if I take the decimal here now, and I move it two to the left, here's one, here's two, then I end up with 0 0.045. And I've justified why I was able to do that moving, right? I was able to do the moving because I divided by 100. And I divided by 100 because that's what per cent means. It means per, as in division by, 125, we'll do the same thing to show the work for it. 125 divided by 100, and what will that end up being? 1.25. So again, I take the decimal point, which is now at the end of the 5, and then move it to the left. So 1.25% so means per 100. All right. There are three different ways you can think about percents as they relate to numerical decimal values. And these are the three different percent forms. So one is finding a percent of a number. Two is finding what percent one number is of a number. And the third one is finding a number when a percent of a number is not. Oh, all that you did really good. It sounds really funny because I got the percent in there a lot and number in there a lot. And, um, these are the three different forms. So I'm going to show you without context, okay? So I'm not going to create an actual example. But I'm just going to create the language of what you're looking for when these three different forms are present, okay? So for example, you can have something like this. What is 15% of 32? So you're finding the percent specific percent value of some number. And you do this probably whenever, you may not do it this way, but this is what some people do. You do this in a couple of situations in everyday life. One, you do this often by tips. Okay? A lot of people do a 15% tip or a 20% tip and they do something like this. At least that's what they're thinking and then they have some shortcut way that they do it, but finding tips. Another way you do this for every day, or at least you should, is when you do your time, right? 10% of your income. So the percent of some number that you're looking at. Okay, so that's the first form. The second form is saying something like this. What percent of 47 is 12? So here's an example. Um, 
I purchased a paint pretty much every fall and spring in a consignment sale. And in a consignment sale, I don't make the full amount of what I sell in Zephat because they're the ones who are doing all of the heating on the racks and moving stuff around and selling it for me. So I price everything and then I leave it there and they sell it for me. So they take a percent of what I what I priced things at. Well, if I want to make sure that they're actually giving me what I really thought I had, because I was listing online, what happens is it tells me the actual value of the clothing and what I sold it for. So if I price something for four dollars, it says it sold for four dollars, and then there's lots of delays and discount things. But it tells me what the prices are that they really sold at. So last time when this happened, the amount of the price was, and I don't remember exactly, but let's just say for argument's sake um, that it was, um, it was about four hundred something. It was, it was probably about $550, we'll say $550. Okay, so $550 and my children's clothing and toys and whatever was gone for good. It's good. So I get money back in my pocket to buy more kids' clothing and toys. But that aside, it's so good. I don't have lots of things cluttering in my house. So $550. But when they sent me a check, it wasn't a check for $550 because they had to take a proportion of that, right? So if I want to make sure that they did what they said they were going to do, I can take the portion that they sent me, which was about $400, okay, so $400, and I would say, what percent is $400 of the $550? And I can make sure that it really matched up to what they said they were going to take out, and not that they took out more or less. So this is an example. And there are other places for that, too. You can talk about what percent of your, um, like you were talking about uh, investing, what percentage of um, you increase on the money you have in some stock. Or what percentage increase on your banking account? Those kinds of things. You can look at this perspective too. All right, so there's one more. And so this is something like 13 is, um, so I wrote it wrong, is 45% of what number? So in this case, you know the amount you want at the end. I really want to make 50 bucks at this sale. And I know that I'm only going to get 45% of what I sell things at. How much would I have to put the sale and else that happens like that. So you know the amount that you want to achieve, and you know the percentage that you're wanting to use. Okay, so you're kind of working back to find out what the original big amount was. The cool thing about all this is that all of these can be solved with proportions really nicely. And that's why we brought up proportions when I did two or three slides earlier and how to think about decimals, okay? It's because the proportions are so nice. So let's take a look at some examples of how these were used. As we're doing these, you'll notice the bottom of this, I'm asking you every time, what type of problem is this? So I want to make sure you understand which one we're working with, okay? So here's the first example. What is the sale price of a softball if the regular price is $6.80 and there's a 25% So you run into this all the time. You ever go to Kohl's with those little signs on top that say 25% off? Now they also have a little chart right next to it that tells you what the new price is, <laughs> right? But that's how they figured out that chart. They did this to it, okay? So here's what it says. It says the sale price is 680. So there's two different things going on. You have the price of the sale and we have the item's original cost. That's what we're comparing here. And the information we know is the sale price. Oh, we know the regular price. I'm sorry, you're right or wrong. You're right, we know the regular price. So that's going to go on bottom. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we want to find the sale price. Let's put an X there so we can remember where to find All right, on the other side, um, the value that goes on bottom is the 100% value, right? The 100% value was the 680. So I'm going to put 100 on bottom. Now here's where you need to be careful. And I can't remember if it was this class or who was my other class. Um, somebody had a 25% off and the price of price was suit. The price of suit, sale price is what they had given. The sale price was $280 or something like that, $220. And it was supposed to be 25% off. And they told me that the original price of the suit then was $700 and something dollars. And you just stop and think, that doesn't make sense. If I had $700 and I took off 25%, it wouldn't be a $200 suit now. So, what am I going to write on the top of your side? I'm going to write 75. Well, I'm going to write 75, Sarah. So that's the price of Georgia. The price. Right. Do you guys get that? The issue is not. 
not how much did I save. The issue is really how much am I going to pay. Okay? If I save 25%, then I'm going to pay 75% of the price. So I've got a 75 on top here. And write yourself a note, 25% discount means I pay 75%. That's what it means. I pay 75%. The ones I'm going to set up is also the end of proportional work with that, right? So we cross and multiply and so forth. So let's see. I'm going to do the easy one so I can do 100x. So somebody's going to grab their calculator, which you should have with you, and you're going to multiply 75 to 6.
What is 100 times 36,000?